Hey, how's it going guys? John here from DoCast. In this episode, we're going to cover getting started with DigitalOcean and some simple navigation within your droplet. When you first go to DigitalOcean.com, you'll see a page that looks similar to this one if they haven't changed it. So what DigitalOcean is, is some simple cloud hosting. You start up your own instance or your own droplet, and the droplets start at $5 per month. If you have any questions about their pricing, head over to their pricing page and just take a look at their pricing. It's very simple, very straightforward, no hidden fees. If you need more bandwidth, it's two cents per gigabyte. And then if you need a larger cloud hosting plan, they have those as well. If you need even bigger cloud hosting plans, you can contact support for more information and they can help you out there. All right, so let's go ahead and what you wanna do is click on the sign up button. And once you click on sign up, you're just going to register yourself. So email and password, and it'll create your account. And once you're logged in, it's pretty straightforward. It's going to ask you to fill out your billing information. And once you fully log in, you'll be brought to your control panel. And as you can see, I already have a droplet here. And this droplet is the main droplet that runs our DoCast website. When you first create your account, you won't have a droplet. And it'll guide you step by step on setting up your billing, your profile, and starting your first droplet. And so so typically you'll be given the create button and once you go ahead and you go ahead and cre click on create you'll be able to enter your host name so I'm just going to put sample as my host name you can select the size that you need should you need a bigger size go ahead and click on this little arrow right here and it'll give you some bigger options there but I'm gonna go back typically people start off with the 512 megabyte one CPU 20 gigabyte solid slate drive disk with a one terabyte transfer. Usually this is enough to run a pretty simple website or a smaller website and you can scale up at any time should you need to, should your traffic build. They do have an API if you're familiar with APIs where you can automatically access the API to have your server scale automatically but that's a more advanced topic that we'll go over in the future. So go ahead and select your size. I'm going to go ahead and select 512 then select the region that's closest to you. They have three regions, Amsterdam, San Francisco, and New York. Closest to me, I'm going to choose the San Francisco. I'm going to select the image. I like Ubuntu, but should you like another type of you know, image or distribution, they have five different choices here, all a Unix-based. So go ahead and choose what you like the most. I like Ubuntu, and I tend to cover Ubuntu more within DoCast. So I'll choose Ubuntu, and I'll choose the latest one, 64-bit. And I'll just go ahead and I'll leave this vert IO on, and I'll create my droplet. Okay, your root password, keep in mind, will be emailed to you. So it usually takes just a few seconds to go ahead and have your droplet start up on its own. All right, so I'm just going to pause this video so you don't have to wait for the droplet to create itself. And it usually just takes, you know, a couple seconds to get started. But I'll go ahead and pause it and restart it once the droplet creates itself. All right, so the droplet finished up creating itself. And you can see that we have the host name right here, which is sample. Then we have the IP address that you're going to go ahead and you're going to root into. Then you have your droplet statistics here. And any controls that you want to go ahead and use on your droplet. And we'll go over these in a future DoCast. But for now, let's focus on getting started by logging into your droplet. So you should have gotten an email with your root password and your root username along with your IP address. If you haven't, wait momentarily. Chances are that it's being sent and it's just pending. All right, so wait a couple minutes, check your email, and then follow along as we log into your droplet for the first time. All right, so DigitalOcean has sent me my user information for this droplet. I'll pull it up right here on the side. I've got my IP address, my root username, and my password here. So if I go ahead and I just put this command into my terminal program, I'll be able to log right into my droplet with the password credential here. So for Mac, you want to use either your terminal program or iTerm if you're familiar with terminal. If you're not familiar, go ahead and go into your applications folder and then look up the program terminal. All right, so as you can see, I'm using Alfred here, and this is one of the Mac applications you can download from your Mac App Store. But I have two choices. I have iTerm and Terminal. So if I go ahead and I just open up Terminal, I'll just click on that. It'll look something like this. 
iTerm is a little more customizable, and I prefer to use iTerm. It looks very similar to Terminal, so whatever you prefer to use, go ahead and use it. Now, if you're running Windows, you're going to want to run a program called Putty. And if you do a quick Google search for Putty, you'll be brought to a downloads page that looks very similar to this one. It's a very simple website where you can download Putty, install it on your Windows, and then it's going to ask you to set up a few things. And what you want to do is you want to set up the host name with your IP address and then it's going to ask for a port number you want to make sure that port number is 22 and then make sure you're using the SSH protocol so if you're not sure how to do that I recommend going to Digital Oceans community they have a great article on how to do this just go to the help and community section and search for putty the article is titled how to log into your droplet with putty for Windows users and it's a quick three-step setup here where first you download it then you set up the configuration and then you simply connect and once you're connected the commands will be very similar to what I'm going to teach you. So let's go back into the terminal. My choice for the command line program that I'm going to use is iTerm. And what I have to do is if I pull up that email once again, I'll use the IP address here. So I'll just type in SSH, root for the root user. Then we're going to use the at sign to tell terminal where we're going to log in at. So I'll type in the IP address, then I'll press enter. It's going to ask me if the authenticity of this host is something I want to continue with. So I'm going to type in yes. It's likely going to ask you this both in PuTTY and within Terminal or iTerm, whatever program that you're using. Just go ahead and choose yes, press enter, and it shouldn't ask you to do that again because it's going to save it to your known hosts file and we can dig into the known hosts in the future but for now just go ahead and choose yes then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take this password and I'm gonna either paste it or type it into there so then I'll press enter voila I'm logged into my Ubuntu droplet here I can type in clear to clear this view up and then I can begin navigating through my droplet so the first thing I like to do is I like to use the ls command just to see what files are there if you're not familiar with the ls command Go ahead and go to Ducast and search for using the ls command. I have a screencast on that that will go into deeper detail of how to use the ls command and how to get the most out of it. But for now, ls will show you the files within your current directory. And I'm going to use the cd command just to get out of the current directory. And I'm going to put dot dot to go into the parent directory. And I just want to see what's there. All right, so I'll use ls. And I'll see that, hey, there's some directories in here. Um, if I want to, I can use lsla to see whether they're directories or files. A directory will have a D in front of it, and a file will have a dash. But most of these are just directories, if not all of them are directories. So what we can do is we can just focus on using the ls commands and the cd commands to navigate through your droplet. And I'll just go ahead and now expand this a little so you can see a little better. And I'll just go ahead and clear up the view again. Just for example's sake, I use ls so I can see everything. And let's say I want to go into the etc folder, or the etsy folder is what it's also known as. So I'll change the directory with cd etc, and then you'll notice that it takes me into the etc folder. So I'm no longer within the parent folder, but now within etc. And I can list the files in there, or the directories in there, using the ls command. And I can see all the different files in there. So there's a lot more information within the etsy folder. Um, and should I choose to go into another folder, like let's say Vim, I can CD into Vim as well. And then I'll use LS to see what's in there, or LSLA to see whether they're files or directories. And these two here are files because they are prefixed with a dash. All right, so that's simple navigation within your droplet and getting started. I recommend that you check out the Ducast episode on setting up ZPanel, and that's actually episode one. It goes over installing ZPanel on your DigitalOcean Ubuntu droplet, and ZPanel is very useful for the newbie developer or the newbie server administrator just because it sets up a lot of the dependencies like PHP, MySQL, PHP MyAdmin, and all the things that you need to just get started developing developing your applications rather than messing around with you know server privileges or or installing s certain server applications so that your PHP scripts or your websites 
can get running, get started on. So again, it installs Apache, it installs MySQL, PHP MyAdmin, PHP, and all those other things that you're going to typically need on a regular web server. So I recommend you check out episode one. Should you need more information about installing something else in your droplet, I recommend checking out the help and community area of DigitalOcean. As a lot of topics that they constantly add to, and so if it's not within Ducast, go ahead and check out this help and community section and they'll likely have the information that you need to install a certain application on your droplet. Again, I hope this has helped you guys. Have a great rest of your day and happy hosting.